Alright lads, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Tom Harlock and I do not have an intro, but after reading this literary stillborn, I do have the desire to remove my own eyes. If talking shit about Lele Pons is considered beating a dead horse, allow me to be the one who finally sends her to the glue factory. Before I start today's video, if you are not subscribed, consider doing so. I want a million subscribers because I deserve it. <laughs> if you're not quite sure who Lele Pons is, I've made a video on her in the past, so make sure to check that out. But essentially, she is... One, a Latina. Two, uh, an Instagram comedian who is also a Latina. Three, the internet's favorite punching bag. Within good reason, not because she's Latina, but she is, just in case you forgot. Latina. After posting vines, Lele made her way to YouTube and music and all of that is pretty shit. However, her final insult on my senses, Lele's final solution, surviving high school, a novel by Lele Pons and her ghostwriter. But Lele Pons, starring Lele Pons, the Latina, perfectly captures Lele Pons' infectious and genuine personality. Oh wow, what, an, what a crazy and incredible review. I wonder who left that. AOL. <laughs> In this funny, fresh and lovable novel, Vine superstar Lele Pons teams up with number one New York Times best-selling author Melissa Dela Cruz to bring her fans a rollicking ride through the high school years. Lele's novel retails for $11.99. I think I paid about £8 for it. Wish I got a Big Mac. Regret that decision for the rest of my life. From the Vine star with more than 11 million followers. Honestly, this book is exactly what you think it's going to be. A pile of absolute wang. Honestly, I read a lot of books. I've read a lot of books in my time. I'm an avid reader. I'm a literary giant. However, I have never read something more full of shit in my whole entire life. I read this book twice this weekend and I listened to the audiobook twice because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing any details. See, the first time I read the book, I wasn't quite sure what the plot was actually about or it, 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 I thought I missed the whole entire point of the book. I didn't, just turns out there isn't one. It's, it's literally 250 pages of shit. I'm so sorry, trees. Whoever did this to you, I am so sorry. This was a tree. This was actually a tree. This was something that like, gave us life and that like, helped us out in a lot of ways. This is gonna drive people to suicide with how fucking dull it is. There are two benefits this book has given to the world. One, stroking Lele Pond's massive fucking ego. Two, any writer out there who was thinking, hmm, I'm a bit shit, I, I'm, I'm, I'm never gonna get published. If this, if this can make it, this, if this can make its way onto bookshelves, you can do anything. I could take a shit. I've just spat in this piece of paper, yeah? This has more literary meaning than this ever will. Ever will. In the grand scheme of things, I may have put 20 quid in Lele Pons' bank account. However, I am extremely happy with the audiobook because Lele Pons reads the prologue. So instead of me describing what this book should be about, let's listen to this batty bitch talk about it. Simon & Schuster Audio presents Surviving High School, a novel by Lele Pons. I shall now tell you how I came to be truly Lele, a person I love for better or for worse. I was born in Caracas, a major city in Venezuela. I found that I knew how to make people laugh. Who the fuck's lying to her? Speaking to others using words was a weakness. Words are your weakness? I absolutely couldn't fucking tell. N give me a clue, Lele. Honestly, please inform me about how terrible your word. I have fucking post-it notes, bitch. I know your words are terrible. <laughs> so, that is the story of how I developed my Lele essence. What follows is the story of how I survived my first year at Miami High and how I got to share my message with almost 10 million followers. I hope you enjoy it. No. XO, Lele. Uh, shut the fuck up, Lele. You know what you're doing. You knew this was torture. Lele, honestly, I have never met a girl that wants to fist herself so entirely and so hard. Underneath the heading of every single chapter is the amount of followers that she has. You see this? Chapter one, zero followers. I'm just a lonely girl from Caracas. I don't know anything about the internet. 60 pages in, chapter 10. Parents' idea of cool. What's that underneath it? Oh, crikey, it looks like a follower account update. Chapter 28, four million, two, she, this is every chapter. So the beginning of chapter one, as I said, Lele thinks she's the most special, quirky, different girl in the world. The first thing you need to know about me is that I wasn't always the gorgeous, sexy, cool, breezy blonde you know today. I know, I know, <laughs> it's shocking. No, I hear you disagreeing. Lele has always been perfect. 
Well, you're right. I have always been perfect. But that's another story for another time. No, it's not. That's the, 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 the story of you being perfect is... L and I know what you're thinking. It's a novel. Don't take it so personally. This isn't Lele. Okay. Well, the main character is called Lele Pons. Um, the, the, the parents are named after her parents. And it, and, and it references um, the, the jo Josh Peck. Do you guys want a Josh Peck reference? She meets Josh Peck in this book. So it sounds like it's a real version of her life. However, Lele describes it as, This is a novel and the character Lele Pons is based on the real Lele Pons. But it's not her exactly. And the stories in this book were inspired by Lele's life and her vines. But this story is made up. This is not a memoir. It is a fictional- Why am I speaking like Marina Joyce? It is a fictional memoir. If such a thing can exist, why not? So this book was sold on the premise of it being about a, a young girl's first year at a public high school. Ooh, Lele's a qu quirky and wacky Latina. Will she survive? Will this spunky spirit survive her first year at Miami High? I wouldn't have minded. I wouldn't have minded if this book was just like a Mean Girls parody-esque book where it's like, Ooh, yeah, I'm quirky and I'm different and I'm from a different country. Hm, I don't speak the language and I don't know if I'm gonna fit in. Ooh, love interest. Ooh, I go from the loser to the big blossoming. So I wouldn't have minded that because you kind of anticipate a certain level of cheesy shit when it comes to these stupid YouTube books. However, this, I'm gonna read some direct quotes out. Don't worry. I'm gonna go through some of the characters and the, the plot points and the plot holes throughout this video. So if you like that kind of shit, stick around, even though I have been filming for an hour. So you've probably been stuck around for a bit. Where do I begin? I don't, I don't want to begin. I don't know. With any book, so say for example, the Bible, I start with, this is Lily's version of the Bible. She starts with zero followers and she's like, nobody knows me and nobody trusts my, she, Lily Pons has rewrote the Bible. Is there going to be a religion? I hope there's a fucking religion. Instead of Sundays going to church, we just jump in the pool and talk about how much of a Latina we are. You walk in, there's someone on the organ playing Gasolina by Daddy Yankee. I'm a convert. So this book is sold with the premise that the plot is, I'm Lele Pons and I'm a quirky Caracas girl from Venezuela. And I'm here to tell you that I'm new at Miami High. Will I survive my first year? I wouldn't have minded the plot if it was like that, by the way. It would have been shit and boring, but I wouldn't have minded it because at least there was a beginning, middle and end and there was like a narrative for me to follow. Maybe some fun and interesting characters for me to relate to. This book has nothing to do with surviving high school in, 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 in any instance. Yeah, she may be in a high school and the whole start of the book may be her moving to a new high school, but it's not about her, her conquering her internal fears or maybe finding a love interest, getting some best friends and struggling with her grades, but overcoming it. Become, you know, I'm an ugly duckling and now I'm a Caracas swan. It's, it's none of that. It's, 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 it's about Lele Pons and her rise to stardom and everyone else kind of dealing with her being a cunt. If this book wanted to be honest, the back of it would say, Lele Pons slowly rises to fame whilst attending a school. Will this spunky Caracas Venezuelan princess ever shut the fuck up about how many followers she has? Spoiler alert, she, she, she can't. Every chapter starts with how many followers she has. There's a few other characters in this book, such as Darcy, who's Lele's best friend, kind of, even though Lele fucking hates her. Every other line in this book is like, oh yeah, you look so pretty, Darcy, and the next line is, Darcy's an absolute cunt. They have a weird relationship, and every time Lele mentions Darcy, it's talking about how she's the only African-American at the school. This is how Lele describes her and Darcy meeting. The bell rings, and I've never been so excited to get back to class. I notice a kind-looking African-American girl walking back on campus with impeccably braided hair and indisputably nerdy glasses. This book is full of potholes from literally chapter one. So chapter one, day one of Miami High, zero followers. Like three pages in, it talks about how she starts Vine and how it's such a magical experience for her and how she started Vine in her old school and she has a thousand followers from there. So you're just, you're chatting shit from the word go. This book is 50 chapters long. Day one starts on chapter one with her first day at Miami High, which obviously she gets bullied at in the most nonsensical way ever. In first period, English, a boy with spiky blue hair throws a crumpled ball of paper that bounces off my head. During second period, world history, 
a kid with a backward baseball cap calls out, Hey, why do you talk so weird? When I explain to him that I have a Venezuelan accent, he calls back, I don't know, it sounds like you just don't know how to talk. So that is just, that is, that is one of the opening paragraphs. So there's a lot to digest just in this one segment. A kid with blue spiky hair, even though in two pages time some girl bullies Lele because she's dressed a bit outlandishly and, hmm, we keep it pretty simple around here. Doesn't seem like it if this lad's got blue spiky fucking hair. Two, two, who the heck, no, no one gets paper balls thrown at them for no reason. Lele, Lele, Le, 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 you're clearly an arsehole. Number, th number three, is she ever going to not mention the fact that she's Venezuelan or Latina in a sentence? In third period, calculus, a red-headed girl with glasses approaches me to say, Everyone here dresses kind of more subtle. Just so you know, for tomorrow. I know what you're thinking. Mm, maybe as a reader, I should be feeling sorry for Lele. She's getting bullied on her first day. No, I'm not gonna feel sorry for Lele. She is an absolute unlikable cunt throughout the whole entire thing. There is, in fact, there's no characters that I like. I've already discussed Darcy, her best friend. Let's talk about the love interest. His name is Alexi, A-L-E-X-E-I. This is how Lele describes meeting Alexi. A miracle in first period English. Mr. Contreras presents us with Alexi Kuiper, transfer student. There's really only one way to say this. Alexi is hot. Blue eyes. Blonde hair pushed playfully off his brilliant, fo brilliant forehead. Okay. Abs loosely defined behind his white t-shirt. He's James Dean for the modern schoolgirl. Throughout the whole entire book, you would have thought that he would have... Uh, any redeeming quality with him being the love interest, maybe he's super friendly and considerate and kind and not, no, he's just an absolute arsehole. The first couple of pages are just about her just struggling to find somewhere to eat at lunch and oh, maybe I won't have any friends, but it's okay, I'm Lele Pons, I'm one of a kind and that's why people don't like me. Every situation that could be in any way interpreted as a negative towards Lele, she seems to flip it around as to something where she's the most special person in the world and that's why things are going wrong for her. Like I said, the conversations in this book are just so unrealistic. Let me tell you about some dialogue between Lele and her parents. So Lele comes downstairs on day two, not wearing something as obnoxious as a white t-shirt and black trousers. You look lovely, mum says, filling my glass with orange juice. I liked your outfit yesterday, dad interjects rather uselessly. It was creative, unique. I hope you're not going to let this new school squash your individuality. Well, if it does squash my individuality, it will be your fault, as you are the one who sent me there. They give each other the famous look that says, well, that's our Lele, and that's the end of that. She couldn't just go downstairs and go to school. It has to be some kind of social commentary about how excellent Lele Pons is and how hmm, she's just true to herself. Hmm, she's never gonna change. Newsflash, if you're a cunt, change. Fundamentally, shift your ideologies and your belief if you are, well, if you're Lele Pons, but if also if you are an arsehole, specifically if you're Lele Pons. We have the best friend and the love interest, but with any good book, you need to have an enemy, you need to have an arch nemesis, and this comes in the form of Yvette Ambaro. Why do they always have to have the full name when it's the baddie? It's always, hmm, that's Regina George. Hmm, that's Yvette Ambaro. If Lele at the beginning of the school year went from mm, shy duckling, mm, I, people aren't gonna like me, I'm just quiet and I'm different, I'm from a different country, I'm I, I, I'm from Caracas. Then she starts getting like, oh, I'm, I'm more popular now, people are accepting me for my flaws and maybe I can accept them too. Like, I, I would kind of understand it and I would kind of, I wouldn't hate it as much as I fucking despise this book. But the only development is, oh, I have no followers and I start fucking high school. Oop. I end high school, and I have shit loads of followers, and people like me because I'm famous, and I don't give a fuck about grades. You think I need a fucking education? There, it's the, 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 there are terrible messages in this book. The whole point of the book is Lele convincing everyone that she shouldn't care about school because being an internet celebrity is more important. There's this one part where she burnt. She burnt! She sets it on fire! So, her best friend, Darcy, gets an A in a test. Lele gets a D or an E or she fucking fails the test. So Darcy turns around like, ooh, I got an A. Lele's like, ooh, I got a D. And then, I'm just gonna read it to you. Where's this, where's this, where, 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 where is it? Of course Darcy, who is sitting next to me, gets an A. Why's this girl got to be so smart all the time? I bet she even barely studied. School just comes naturally to her. 
I want to be proud of her, but I'm just jealous. Like, like f well done for being self-aware, but like, you you're a cunt. What did you get, she asks. D minus. Oh, hmm. I got an A. Yes, Darcy, I can see that. You're literally holding it up in my face. She laughs and I laugh and she laughs and I laugh. All the while, I'm hot. This is where it gets crazy. All the while, I'm holding a lighter up to her test. She doesn't notice until it catches fire and the smell of burning paper fills the room. And then, to carry on the absurdity, when she gets sent to the principal office, she starts talking about how much she's fake crying and, oh, I'm gonna make her feel bad for me. I'm famous, I don't need any of this. You're not gonna suspend me, I'm famous. There's this one part, let me have a little look. Mrs. Lombardo, the principal, reasonably, says to Lele after she fucking set a piece of paper on fire for no reason, hmm. Do you think you can just do whatever you want because you're a little bit famous? I mean, I honestly want to know what you were thinking. That's a pretty reasonable thing for a principal to turn around and say to an actual fucking student. Lele says, My first instinct is to tell her that I'm not a little bit famous. I'm almost a lot famous at this point, closing in on a billion loops viewed. Shut up! No one ca- Nobody give us a fuck. So after showing absolutely no character development in the principal's office, Lele finds Darcy and you would have thought that she would turn around and be like, you know what, I'm so sorry, it's, I'm a dick. I'm a bit of a dick, I just let things go with them ahead. And she kind of does. She kind of pulls me in there and makes me think I'm going to like her. Let me read you this. So this is Darcy. Lele, are you out of your goddamn mind? You could have hurt someone and now I can't even show my parents how well I did on that quiz. Lele replies with, Ish, yes, that is uh, really hard, and I am sorry. Like, you can't even feign sincerity. I try to genuinely care that her parents will never see the results of this one particular pop quiz. Look, I figured you'd be mad, and I would be too if I were you. What I did was really selfish. When you got an A, I took it as a sign of my own incompetence, but your success isn't about me, it's about you. I realise that now and I'm happy for you. This could very easily be a defining moment in the book. Lele could get humbled by her friend. Darcy could turn around and be like, well, you've been a prick recently. Like, you are a dick. Just to, so there's one, like, hyper-aware character in this whole entire novel. I would have given this five stars out fucking five stars. However, because Lele Pons made this book, this is how it continues. This is, this is what turns this book into a fan fiction that Lele Pons decided was a good fucking idea. Darcy responds, and you excel at what you do. You have over five million followers on Vine. Do you know how rare that is? You're a performer and a comedian and you're doing astronomically well. You're reaching more people than I ever will with my good grades. Darcy is so right. But to be nice, I say, that's not true. Mm, you're gonna become a scientist and cure AIDS probably. Burn the libraries. Any library that has this in it, burn it because all the other books have been fucking tainted. This is masturbation in literary form. When she first meets her enemy, Yvette, it's because she's in the gym changing rooms and she's taking off her t-shirt and she's got an old sweaty bra on. Oh God, the horror. Let me read you this segment. Hey new girl, I think my grandma has the same bra. That never happened. So Lele and Yvette have a relationship where they bully each other, but at one point they become friends. And <laughs> take a guess as to why they become friends. And it's, it's outlined in this chapter. Can you, can you read the heading there? Are you excited about what's to come up? Three signs that show a person is Latin. Can she stop? Number one, just in case you wanted to know. Reggaeton. Reggaeton wasn't always first on the list, but it's getting promoted ever since it identified Yvette as Latina. Yvette and Lele become friends at one point in this book because they're both Latina. But you know how they both realise that they're both Latina? Nothing to do with the fact that her name is Lele Pons and she has a clear, apparently, Venezuelan accent. The reason she got bullied on day one, if you remember. The guy said, why do you talk funny? And she's like, well, it's because I'm crackers. No, nothing to do with that. It's because Lele's phone rings and her ringtone is Gasolina. Gasolina. And because of that, Yvette over in Yvette, Yvonne, I don't give a fuck anymore. The, 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 the frenemy is over in the corner and she starts like popping it to the song. And Lele's like, I'm not the only Latina. You're, you're a Latina too. 
Oh, I hate this book. I hate this book. Do you know what I've actually been most embarrassed about, honestly and truly, reading this book over the weekend? I've been thinking to myself, if I get hit by a bus whilst listening to this audiobook, the last thing that people are going to think that I was voluntarily listening to was Lele Pond surviving high school. I've been walking around reading this with like other books in front of it so people don't know that I'm reading Lele's book. So three signs that this person is Latina. Reggaeton. So as long as you listen to reggaeton, you're basically a Latina. Number two, the telenovela slap. The telenovela is a distinguished art form in which Latinos act out over the top situations and exaggerate every syllable for the sake of our entertainment. Number three, loud cursing. Latino guys and girls are more, well, let's say self-expressive than your average person. <laughs> so basically, this part of the book is Lele is awkward and unapproachable and she really wants to go out of Alexi, but she doesn't know how to approach it because he's so like mm, hot and dreamy and he's a big German boy, mm, big blue eyes and blonde hair. Mm, just say you want to fuck me, Lele. It's, it's getting embarrassing at this point. This middle part is, ooh, I'm getting popular now so everyone wants me. Everyone wants to fuck me, everyone loves me and everyone thinks I'm great and Alexi's now my boyfriend. This, this end part. This? How do I describe the end of this book? Do you know what I'm going to do? I might just end the video right here because that's essentially what this cock-blocking piece of shit book did to me. Can you see the pressure? I was going to give this to my local charity shop, but I don't actually want to do them the disservice of giving them a piece of shit. There's this one part where Lele gets splashed by a car at a party, like in every film fucking ever, and she's all wet and, oh, I'm so sad and miserable. No one loves me, no one's going to like me, and people are going to think I'm an even bigger loser than I am. Well, fucking yeah, spoiler alert. But listen to, listen to this, listen to how self-serving and how much of a fucking wank-off this sentence is. Ooh, Yvette Imparo shrieks, Lele looks like a sewer rat. Yes, I say, I got splashed. I don't look cute, whatever, Yvette. What's your problem with me? Standard dialogue, shit, but I am, it's okay, it's passable. This, this is it. My problem with you is that you're a freak and you don't belong here. I don't like when girls like you come around thinking you're special and can just be whoever. Is this the police coming to take me away? I deserve to be taken away. I spent my own hard-earned fucking money on this. I should have no legal competence. Let me continue. My problem with you is that you're a freak and you don't belong here. I don't like when girls like you come around thinking you're special and can just be whoever you want to be. But I can be whoever I want to be. That doesn't mean I'm special. That means I'm human. Anybody can be whoever they want to be. It's just that not everyone realizes it. Listen to how Alexi sticks up for her. She's not a freak, Alexi says. She's cool, and so what if she's a little weird? That's what makes her so incredible. Those aren't conversations that 16 year olds have. She's super cool, incredible, quirky, and that's what makes her so incredible. Shut the fuck up. Shut the f shut up. At the beginning of the book, she describes herself as Lele 1.0, and then throughout, she's like, oh, now I'm advancing to Lele 2.0. Time for me to start wearing mascara. Oh, I've got my braces off. Oh, I'm Lele 2.5, until it all comes crashing down on her. Lele and her best friend Alexi split up towards the end of the book after a tumultuous relationship that really didn't involve doing fuck all. Like, their relationship and the dynamic between them two were it was the exact same when they were friends compared to when they were boyfriend and girlfriend. The only difference is Lele kept talking about her tits a lot more. Lele's a little bit heartbroken, but she tries to be mature. And this is right at the end of the book where I'm actually thinking, yes, come through, darling. Please give us some kind of development. Let me like you. I have not liked you for a single page. Let me like you towards the end. Absolutely not. She has to shit on my hopes and dreams, doesn't she? Like she does in every other aspect. To cement the fact that Lele hasn't learned anything throughout the whole entire book, towards the end, she meets Alexi's new girlfriend, and she's called Lila. And this is how Lele describes her. I scan Lila from head to dot, 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 where the table cuts her off. Long blonde hair, green eyes, edgy leather jacket, Okay, okay. So she's a less cute version of me. If I started this year as Lele 1.0, she's Lele 0.5. But remember, by now, I am basically Lele 10.0, especially with all the emotional growth I've done. What emotional growth? You sound as conceited as you do here than you do on page one. But there's been no development. You've made me hate you more.
How is that po- how can I hate you? Lele Pons, ask yourself that. You've made me hate you more. How is that possible? Let me read you the Josh Peck scene. Where is it? We're closing up towards the end of the book now and Lele's at a Nickelodeon party. Hey, are you Lele Pons? Someone calls as I'm making my way back to the front door. I turn around and guess who I see? Josh Peck from Nickelodeon's Drake and Josh. I'm so starstruck that I almost forget to be mad at him for mispronouncing my name. Almost. Actually, I say, it's Lele, Drake. You're ridiculous. He seems impressed. Again, she's talking about how to pronounce her name because it's her only personality trait. Instead of Josh Peck just featuring in the book, maybe she wanted to drop a name in there that people might recognize. That's all well and good. She, she didn't even think of a unique and bizarre scenario in which Josh Peck is introduced. This whole entire part, uh, the, oh, it's pronounced Lele. Oh yeah, well, I, your name's Drake, not Josh. Ha <laughs> ha, that's the joke. That's a vine. That's an actual whole entire vibe. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh, shit. My name's Lily. Oh shit. Drake. Oh. I can hear the sound effects and everything. Like I'm, I'm so the final scene of this book, Lele and Darcy are hanging out. It's, it's not an impactful scene in any way, but it should nicely tie up the book. Give us a good moral message. Let me know exactly what they wanted to put across. So Lele does Darcy's nails and just as she's finishing up, she knocks her over. And then when she knocks her over, she goes flying. She goes everywhere. She's such a clumsy bitch. Oh, this is crazy. This is wacky. We have to turn this into a vine, I say. When your best friend is the clumsiest human alive. Dope, she says. Do you think we can get it in six seconds? Let's find out. Every every chapter ends with, oh wow, we should make this into a vine. It tries to be so deep about vine, I can't. As someone who made vines, like don't get me wrong. Yeah, it was all well and good, all fun, special place in everyone's heart and all that shit. Um, but it's not as deep as she makes it sound. She goes on about how vine is a happy place and uh, it sounds stupid, but I just want to shut off from the world and express myself and create my art. She refers to vines as her art so many times. So the final chapter of a book such as this really summarise the key messages and the points. Maybe any questions that the author wanted the reader to ponder throughout this whole experience. Let's see how this book is summarised. Not a lot can happen in six seconds. There's not much you can do. You can't write a song or read a book or pass a test or complete a manicure or clean your room. You can't cook a meal or make a plan or learn to drive or write a letter or save the world. But this year, I've learned what you can do. You can wake up, become alive, send a text, take a shot, make a friend and fall in love, fall in place, save a life, make a change, make a first impression, get a second chance. And most importantly, you can tell a story. I only need six seconds to tell a story. And as long as I have that, I know I'll be just fine. That's not, that's, that's not, that's, you can't just end a book like that. Perfectly captures Lele Pond's infectious and genuine person that says who? Well, says AOL, apparently. You didn't read this fucking book. AOL, come on. AOL, if you're still out there. AOL, if you are still a company, look me in the eyes right now and tell me that you read that novel. I could probably pull quotes from this book and talk about it all day long, but I have spent all weekend reading it and now all day talking about it. So I just want to move to a country. I just want to move to a different country. I want to move to a different country. I want to move to Caracas. Despite my scathing review, if you are going to be the person to buy this online, number one, don't. Number two, make sure you're protected. If only I had a service or a product I can recommend to help keep you safe and secure when you shop online. Oh wait, I do. Today's video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. If you're not sure what a VPN is, it stands for Virtual Private Network and it helps to protect your security online and your internet whereabouts. When you shop online, you leave your credit card details littered around the internet and hackers, if they wanted to, could get into your accounts, spend all your money and they could do a lot worse. I clearly buy a lot of terrible, terrible things from a lot of shady, shady websites. And I feel a lot securer knowing that going in, I am protected with a VPN. VPNs are helpful for more people than you probably realize. Say for example, you go to watch a YouTube video, but it's not available in your country. Boop, just put yourself somewhere else. ExpressVPN has tons of server options in over 90 countries. You can put yourself wherever you wanna be. They also have apps for all your devices, whether it be iOS, Android, Windows, Linux, they can sort you out. It's also been voted the number one VPN service by TechRadar. Not that you should, but if you need any more convincing, ExpressVPN works out at only around $7 a month. So to sign up, make sure you click the link in my description and again, the link on screen, expressvpn.com forward slash Tom Harlock. Thanks again to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. 
I really appreciate it. And thank you to you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want me to review any more YouTuber books, feel free to let me know down below in the comments. Let me know down below in the comments if you disagree with any of my opinions. I'm not claiming that I'm the best, biggest book reviewer in the world, but I do know shit when I see it. This is a pile of shit. Thanks again for watching. I love you guys. I'll see you soon and bye-bye.